somewhere in or around the square ring. As Tim Sheridan reports, Sugar Ray's passion seems to go way beyond any argument about the future of boxing. Boxing has always been my passion. Uh, you know, I was the son of a boxer. Became an amateur boxer myself, age uh, 15. Uh, went on to become a professional boxer. Uh, after that, I became a, uh, a trainer of boxers. Uh, made a comeback at a late age, around 35 years of age, I, I came back. Uh, then went on to become a boxing promoter. Then became a boxing official. Uh, and finally, I've been involved as a publisher. With hands that once delivered heavyweight bombs, Sugar Ray Wheatley taps out the latest boxing news for his monthly band of dedicated readers. Having met the who's who of the fight game and seen it from every angle, Sugar Ray tells it like it is. He's editor and publisher of World of Boxing, but in truth, Ray is probably as good a story himself as any that fill the pages of this popular monthly ring rag. That's right, yeah, it's another comeback. And uh, I've been lucky that I don't, I don't have to put the glove on. Gloves on, I just uh, aim up to the typewriter. Wait for the bell, wait for the bell. But Sugar Ray's readers can rely on him to get close to the action. He's one of this country's most qualified boxing officials. His own story reaches into most corners of Australian boxing and back into its golden age. The connection is made every Thursday without fail when he takes his mother Margaret to lunch at the same Chinese restaurant in Irmington, the Sydney suburb where he grew up. You'd barely guess this elegant 71-year-old is profoundly deaf. My husband was a southpaw and he used to, you know, how they cover up like that in his first professional fight. Anyhow, I thought he was getting, taking too much punishment because this other guy was pretty good. So his brother threw the towel in the first round. Do you think my husband didn't perform? He said, look, he said, the trouble is you don't know anything about boxing. He said, I was only protecting myself. He said, you do. He, he was so angry. Eric Benedict Wheatley was a light heavyweight champion who died of a heart attack at 37, leaving wife Margaret and four sons. Ray III was 12 at the time and already hooked on what his mother still thinks is a wonderful sport. Mum would be describing about some of the great fights that were fought at Sydney Stadium. And, uh, and she's very descriptive. And uh, she made, made me feel like I was sitting there at ringside, you know, watching the fight. Believe it or not, Ray began as a featherweight and then won a Golden Gloves title as a welterweight, just missing out on the Olympics. He turned pro as a middleweight and it wasn't long before he came up against real class. You fought Tony Mundine and you knocked him down in the first round. Uh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Tony um, uh, threw a couple of punches at me and uh, luckily they missed. And I just happened to tag him as he was coming in and uh, put him down. But um, it didn't take long for him to get back on top again and he put me away in the following round. <laughs> so he got back up. He <laughs> did, yeah, yeah. Even at that time, Timmy, uh, he found it hard. So after a couple of pro fights, people realised he, he was pretty hard. You know, he was a really good fighter. Thinking perhaps it might be easier to find another Tony Mundine than to outbox the existing, Ray retired and became a trainer. Success came with Australian champion Russell Sands, among others, but even then, a trainer's life is only as settled as his wildest boxer. You adopt them virtually. And uh, if they have a problem outside of boxing, it becomes your problem too. So it, it can be a few headaches involved. Though he was still in good enough shape to fight, Ray's career path took him briefly through promoting fights around Sydney's West. He never lost money, but the stress wasn't worth it. Then another promoter asked him to help fill a bill as a heavyweight. It was a favour, and Ray was 38. And uh, I stepped in and boxed this guy. Yeah, it was a rated guy, and I happened to score a, a points win over him. So, had I lost, I would have that would have been it. But because I won, I was encouraged to fight again, and, and I had a series of fights around the clubs, and uh, I was winning most of them. So I I stayed with it. I progressed up and ended up getting into the Australian ratings. Uh, but that's when the tougher fights came. 
As the story of the boxing Waters family gathered momentum, no one could have seen it more closely than Ray Wheatley. Big Dean's professional debut was against an ageing heavyweight billed as the Sydney Jawbreaker, also known as Sugar Ray Wheatley. I thought, you know, if I get him past a, a few rounds, that he could tire. But um, his father sent him out like a bull at a gate, and uh, he just threw bombs and he connected, and uh, he put me out in the first round. From ring foe, Ray became a close family friend, watching the father Sessa's grand plan to make his three Waters boys all world champions. Ray was in Troy's corner for eight fights, and sheltered all three sons during the family rows that eventually derailed Team Waters. When it was revealed earlier this year that Sess had induced his eldest son to kill, Sugar Ray realised there was a lot he hadn't seen and wasn't told. Uh, it was well hidden from me. I didn't see any of that. And uh, as I said, I know the boys very well. And uh, I'd never seen any sign of that. But you know, I'm, not, it, it, uh, I'm saying it could have happened. I'm not sure. That, you know, I just didn't see any of it. Well, hold on. Let them go in first. At the moment, Australia has 13 fighters rated worldwide, and as far as Ray Wheatley is concerned, there'll always be young men willing to box. Somehow above or simply ignoring the sleaze factor, his belief in boxing was why a friend persuaded Ray to do a writing course and start a magazine. Writer and historian Grantley Keyser jokes that Ray already had enough snaps of himself with boxing identities to last the first dozen editions. He, he manages to be involved in the fight game, but he also manages uh, with, with clever footwork to stay one step ahead of, of the shady side of it. And uh, he has a, a reputation really that's unblemished in, in boxing, in, uh, both as an official and as a fighter. He had a, a very good record as a, as a fighter, and as an official, he's really above reproach. Jeff is ringside, Ray Wheatley, Australia. Sugar Ray has now officiated at a dozen world title fights, four of them involving Australia's Costa Zoo. Costa is from the IBF brand of boxing's alphabet soup, and Ray is an IBF official. That's why he was ringside at Zoo's defence of his title against Leonardo Mars. The ring referee called the fight a technical draw, keeping Judge Ray clear of a controversial decision. Just call it as you see it and stick with it and uh if you know if the promoters aren't happy with that uh well you know you'd rather be not there you know like the proud grandfather he is sugar ray sees the eight thousand or so copies of his magazine off the press and then goes back to his home in Sydney's West, working off some stress under the gaze of his dad and a whole gallery of boxers he's fought, met or admired. As his best mate says, very few see the fight game as Ray does, and that's why he's in it for life. Uh, I think it was Georges Carpentier, the great French light heavyweight, who said that boxing doesn't degrade a man, it in fact makes a man. And the point that he was making was that in the boxing ring, uh, uh, a boxer has no one to rely on but himself and his own fortitude and his own physical preparation, his own cunning, his, uh, his own strength of character. And I think uh, a man like Ray really sums up that, that side of boxing in the fact that he's a man that got it off his backside and had a go himself both as a fighter and now as a journalist. And really, I think in, in terms of uh, Australian boxing, there wouldn't be anyone, I don't think, that really has the knowledge of the fight game that he has. This weekend, Ray is in Indonesia officiating at yet another IBF tournament. Later on, sports.